Thank you, Sharifa. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning to everybody. Okay, I just want to make sure that I'm um, heard. Yes, bro. All right. Okay. Um, okay, it's nice uh, for Edek to invite me again. Yeah. Um, this is this would be, um, I think the the second time uh, that uh, uh, I I speak on. Um, Fostering Responsible and Reproducible Research Through Publication Ethics. Uh, before this, when I speak about, um, you know, um, uh, ethics in publishing uh, organized by EDAC, uh, uh, the sessions were mostly based on, uh, you know, wh where should we publish, yeah? Where should we publish uh, our precious research? But uh, today, I'm going to uh, position this uh, publication ethics and integrity in the context of uh, responsible and re reproducible research, uh, uh, R3, okay, that is uh, very much, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, encouraged and in fact, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the global um, uh, research community, uh, scientific community uh, is, is advocating uh, that uh, researchers worldwide uh, incorporate uh, responsible and reproducible research and innovation uh, in uh, in publishing. So I'm going to bring you everybody today in the context of uh, R3. So uh, before I proceed, I would like to uh, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for attending this uh, webinar. I can see some familiar names. Uh, I, I can I can in fact I can also uh, you know uh, uh, see that some of a few of my colleagues from the library uh, are also, uh, you know, uh, participating in this webinar. Okay, so I will uh, take you through this webinar. Yeah, if you have any questions, you can just put on chat. If there is an urgency for, uh, for because I'm not going to check. Yeah, I'm not going to check for a while. Uh, but if, if there is any urgency, uh, uh, you might just uh, put up your hand. Okay, and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, and uh, unmute and uh, and uh, post the question. Yeah, all right. Okay. So um, I I will uh, basically talk about uh, where and how we should publish our precious research. Uh, so by understanding uh, the basic principles of public publishing ethics. Uh, Practiced by uh, uh, practiced by academic journals in general, eh? scientific journals in general, uh, and also uh, hopefully uh, by uh, understanding this, okay, uh, you will all be able to. We will all be able to apply our understanding uh, of publication ethics uh, and incorporate uh, transparency and reproducibility into how we publish. Uh, th this is because uh, it is very important eh, for us authors. Uh, to preserve the truth uh, of our publications to various stakeholders. We owe the truth to, to, uh, to many people, especially our readers and our, our organizations and also our funders who sponsor our research, especially if you have research grant. So hopefully what I'm going to share today will benefit uh, early career researchers because I put this in the context of, I have prepared this in the context of, you know, uh, uh, um, young researchers uh, perhaps who have started to publish in impact factor journals uh, and also meet, meet uh, career researchers, nah? uh, especially um, uh, those who have not okay, uh, uh, attempted to publish in impact factor journals. So when we talk about impact factor journals in this context, it is uh, journals that are indexed in uh, SSCI uh, and SCIE, okay? uh, um, impact factor journal, the journal with impact factor. Um, um okay <clears throat> all right so i will put this in the context of why should we publish uh, and where okay and also how yeah okay in general uh, uh nowadays okay um my experience as a journal editor uh when i um 
when I have papers, okay, when I receive papers, or if the uh, you know this is common, eh? this is common uh, among uh, journal editors when they receive papers, uh, uh, journal editors will always want to see uh, or would like to accept and possibly publish uh, papers that are uh, that can be widely read. Okay, papers that that are useful to readers. In general, when we talk about in the context of journal, uh, uh, um, during the meeting, a general editorial board meeting, we also say, okay, we always go for, is this particular article citable? Meaning that it is, uh, it is attractive enough to encourage people to read it and hopefully uh, uh, cite it. Okay, so we are going to talk about journals would like to publish papers that are widely read, okay, in general and useful to readers, right? Um, and also, definitely, journals would like to uh, publish yeah, papers that report original and significant findings yeah, uh, that are likely to be interest to a broad spectrum of readers. That's why in the context of some journals nowadays where they have a, a, a structured abstract, for example, there must be, uh, it, uh, there must be a, a one, one, a, one aspect of the structured abstract that talk about uh, the originality. Okay, and the significance uh, of uh, the paper. Okay, all right. Uh, another aspect that articles that are publishable is that the papers, the articles uh, must be well organized and must be well written. Uh, and there have been some extent where gen articles, uh, you know, um, articles are being rejected. Uh, uh, outright reject because of uh, because of the language. However, this is not encouraged actually. Okay, uh, because uh, the editorial uh, board members have the obligation, all right, to ensure that uh, the papers are well organized and well written later on. All right, although although it is now becoming the responsibility of the authors to make sure that uh, you know the the, the articles are. Uh, you know, acceptable enough in terms of language, okay, able to be read and comprehensible uh, uh, to the to the peer reviewers. Yeah. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, papers that are concise and yet complete in the presentation of the findings. All right. So these are the four uh, characteristic I would say. Okay, on what is actually publishable in general, accepted by uh, uh, journal editors. Yeah? All right. We have seen in at in University of Malaya. I would say since um, since two thousand two thousand three two thousand seven, especially okay when we uh, when the research universities uh, were established by our uh, by 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 the Malaysian government, we can see now uh, now uh, as we as as we have actually come, uh, you know, past uh, 20, 20, 2007, yeah? now, now it's becoming about nearly, nearly 20 years, I would say. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. About 20 years. Um, okay. All right. Publishing now, okay, in the context of UM uh, is, is becoming a norm. Okay. Uh, it is becoming a norm. So, uh, UM researchers, research universities, uh, you know, uh, academic uh, researchers, uh, have been publishing very well, all right, to the extent that not publishing uh, is now being the exception, okay? All right, so in this context, uh, I would say that um, uh, publishing, okay, uh, publishing now has become an obligation for us and it is not only to publish, but we are obligated to publish ethically, all right. So uh, I would like to bring this to everybody here, this thought that research is not complete until it is published. That's why so even, even some of my students also, even our, our, when we talk about, you know, uh, when we talk about why do we need to publish, right? So we should always understand that our research is not complete until it is published. So this is something that we should uphold. All right. This is what I feel. I believe that is morally right, that you need to publish because you have something that is very, very important all right, to be reported uh, to, your, uh, to the audience of your research or to your stakeholders. Right. So we publish not because of, uh, the, uh, you know, of certain KPIs and all that. We publish because that is morally right. See? Okay. So publishing your research is morally right. So this is what I would like to 
I would like uh, to, to bring okay, the, 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 the audience for today, okay, whoever is you know, participating in this webinar, uh, that uh, research is not complete until it's, it is published and publishing your research is morally right. Right. Okay. So a detailed and permanent research uh, record okay, that is open, meaning that it is not only research that is being, uh, you know, published. All right. But the research must be detailed. Okay. And also the record must be permanent, meaning that, okay, when we publish, we want to make sure that the publication that we have, the article that we have will be, uh, will be out there permanently. Okay. So the, that, is, that is actually to publish ethically. Right, so we we would like to see this happening. Okay, uh, I mean being incorporated uh, very much earlier when you publish that. Uh, you, when we when I publish an article, okay, I want this particular article to be disseminated well, uh, to be read, to be useful, and this particular article will have a permanent record. Okay, in the context of the scientific literature, right? Okay, some, some, somehow, okay, deviations from this ideal. People will say that this is very ideal, but in reality, it's not easy okay, to make sure that you have, uh, you know, your, your, your research is detailed, your research is open, your research is, will be permanent out there. Because uh, ethical breaches can actually, uh, you know, be intentional or can be unintentional, uh, you know, because of ignorance, right? So as a scientist, as a researcher, as a scholar, we need to develop a strong sense of ethical responsibility. And this, we need to make sure that we apply every stage. Uh, this needs to be applied at every stage of our, our uh, you know, uh, research process. Yeah? Okay, all right. <coughs> okay, so, uh, well, uh, we'll talk about publication ethics, huh? ethics in publishing. Uh, the, pub the integrity will always come first very much earlier. So researchers, we have the responsibility to ensure that our publications are honest, clear, accurate, complete balance, okay, and should avoid misleading, selective, or ambiguous reporting. So this is what we, we, we say as publication integrity, meaning that uh, we, have, we have, as a researcher, we have the quality of being honest okay, in terms of publishing, and having a strong moral principles in publishing. However, these moral principles actually varies, vary from one to another, all right? You will say that, okay, this particular professor, for example, has his or her own, okay, uh, publication integrity, for example, uh, not publishing with students, all right? Okay, for a particular reason, all right? Because this professor has an honest, or, um, uh, uh, you know, has a strong moral principle of not publishing with his or her student. So he or she will have a reason for that. Okay, um, and also, um, not only the researchers have that responsibility, uh, journal editors uh, 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 and also peer reviewers uh, uh, work hard, okay, although they work uh, voluntarily, all right, but they work hard to make sure that the content published is ethically sound, all right, and of course, uh, the publishers also have the responsibility uh, to ensure the integrity of the research literature. And for the publishers, they have set this out in a publication ethic guidelines. And uh, we, we will have uh, to, okay, as, as, um, uh, as um, novice writers, okay, uh, or, or researchers, uh, we, we should always be familiar, okay, of the publication ethic guidelines. Uh, uh, in general, all right, and also that are being, uh, you know, uh, described, okay, uh, for a particular journal, journal publisher, all right? So this is a publication ethics and guidelines, something that, uh, you know, authors should be familiar with, yeah, especially in relation to journals that you always submit to, submit to okay? So publication integrity uh, uh, is, is being, uh, you know, uh, practiced, all right, not only by uh, by uh, uh, the journal editors uh, and peer reviewers and also the publishers. But the most important thing is that the researchers uh, should uphold this, uh, you know, this, uh, the quality of being honest uh, and also have a strong moral principles in, in terms of, you know, uh, in terms of uh, publishing. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, uh, just now, I, I do. I did mention, okay, about the importance of first to owe the truth of our publication. Okay, so to whom should we 
uh, to whom do we owe the truth about our publication and 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 for, and and why okay so it is not only to us definitely okay so we 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 should be truthful to uh, to us okay to our own self all right uh, but uh, we owe the truth about our research and of course about our publication which is one considered one uh, type of research output okay to the public yeah uh, to our uh, uh, to the funding institution Okay, to to the to our to our sponsors lah, especially if you are funded your research is funded by by uh, by research grant eh? uh, to our research participants uh, to our peers to our colleagues to our collaborators who might in the end okay read our research uh, and of course their research may be based on our present research uh, especially to our employers to the university because uh, we we are using our uh, you know, our employment status, the resources, uh, and because the reputation of our employers will be affected, uh, you know, by, by what we do. Uh, you know, if we publish very well, okay, if we get recognized, all right, if we get high citations, for example, from your research, if people use your research, uh, you know, uh, share your research, talk about your research in various platforms. So, uh, your the, the university, for example, your employer will also gain the same reputation. All right, and finally, okay, uh, you owe the truth to your readers, all right, uh, and also to the library, okay, uh, because uh, the readers, especially the library, have the obligation, uh, you know, of making sure that the research coming up from, uh, from uh, you know, uh, various disciplines uh, actually is the pursuit of truth and knowledge, okay. Libraries have the obligation to make sure that uh, the, the record of science, I would say the record of science, meaning that the record of your publications uh, is open, is out there, and also is being preserved. Okay, so that is why uh, we should uh, owe the truth about your publications, right? Uh, for funding support, okay, because uh, for the public, okay, actually, when we talk about research that is being funded, the money actually comes from the uh, taxpayers' money, right? Uh, 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 and also, uh, you know, uh, for uh, for the funders, uh, for, for ministry, for example, MOSTI, or perhaps uh, international funders, Right, so you owe the truth about your publication as well, and for the research participants, meaning that if you underreport or if you overreport, of you or perhaps if you do not report at all, what actually they say, for example, right, or the findings from uh, your field work, okay, uh, you know, objectively, for example, all right, uh, you you they uh, they you they are not being uh, you know. Um, they are not being able to uh, express actually because uh, they have thought about something they have uh, they feel about something but this is something that you you under report or perhaps not reported or misreport all right so out of respect for their autonomy that is why you need to owe the truth about your publication okay so this is very important all right and and as uh, as young researchers uh, you should make sure that uh, you have uh, you have this this thought okay uh, on on why uh, you need to owe the truth about your publication. <clears throat> All right. So uh, responsible and reproducible research. Uh, uh, in the end, uh, okay, the goal is actually to raise uh, research quality uh, and increase the overall uh, reproducibility of scientific results. Meaning that it can be be replicated in the end. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm presenting this. Uh, uh, generally so that it can be um, you know applied in in various disciplines be it uh, the sciences uh, the social sciences arts and humanities yeah <clears throat> okay <clears throat> all right so i have with me here yeah um, what responsible research is all about right the ability to produce ethically acceptable, sustainable, and socially desirable research outcome for the publications for the public through their publications. So it is not just about publishing; it is also, uh, you know, to make sure that, uh, you know, um, your research is socially re socially uh, desirable, meaning that it will make a social impact later on, right? But uh, the, your research, uh, the publication of your research will make a social impact in the end. All right. Perhaps the social imp uh, the, it is not just about scientific impact where you garner citations or uh, or people refer to your 
to your to your articles, for example. But in the end, the general public will have access to your research. They are able to read your research as well. They are be, they are able to talk about your research in various social media platforms, for example. All right. So, uh, uh, general publishers nowadays have been facilitating this uh, by having uh, you know uh, uh, innovative or new ways. Okay, of of um, communicating a research article not only uh, through not only through the 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 the, the paper itself uh, but also through um, highlights highlights of research uh, and in uh, some journal publishers they also encourage you encourage to help you to to uh, to to submit okay or to share an infographic okay of that encapsulate uh, your the summary of your research in the form of infographic uh, and some publishers also do encourage okay uh, 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 authors okay to have a video abstract all right okay so if you have all this uh, that will be very very beneficial okay uh, for for the public actually and this can lead to your research output being socially desirable uh, for the public okay because when you do your when you when you present uh, your your research uh, in a form of infographic for example in a form of video abstract for example all right it can be easily disseminated uh, to the general public okay, to the layman okay they will be able to understand your research all right very well yeah okay <clears throat> all right a responsible, a reproducible research, okay, it is the ability to duplicate the results of prior studies using the same methods. So uh, uh, when we talk about uh, uh, research, okay, that is reproducible, how do you position that in the, in the context of your articles? Normally, what researchers say is that they detail out the method very well. Okay, they detail out the method to the extent that another person who wish to do the same research, okay, will be able to uh, replicate or reproduce the research, all right? But there are actually various, uh, you know, practices that you can uh, do, okay, uh, in order to facilitate uh, reproducibility in your research. We're going to discuss this uh, later on, all right? <clears throat> okay, all right. So uh, let me take you to, um, uh, you know, uh, where do you publish ethically, okay? All right. <clears throat> All right, how do I decide where to publish my precious research? Okay, you can ask this yourself, okay, and then you can answer this yourself as well. Okay, how do you decide where to publish? Okay, do you write first uh, or you decide where to publish first? Uh, you know, do you write first and then decide where to publish? I believe that you, you have all come to a stage where you know, okay, uh, what are the factors that you are, uh, you know, that you, you, uh, you look, uh, that you look for, okay, when, where, to, in terms of where to publish your research. All right, this is basically sharing, okay, uh, a research that I'm current, currently doing, all right, <clears throat> on the factors that uh, early career researchers consider on where to publish their research. I'm just sharing this, okay, because I'm going to bring this uh, to, uh, to, to my thought, okay, on, on where okay, should uh, we publish our research. All right. Um, uh, this particular research is funded by uh, the Alfred uh, Sloan, Alfred Sloan Foundation, all right, and I've been working on this uh, research since 2016, okay, uh, and now focusing on early career researchers from eight countries, Okay, we sample 177 early career research from eight countries. Okay, if you are interested uh, to look into this uh, particular research, okay, uh, uh, and uh, uh, you can you can go to this particular website, uh, uh, Cyber Research, where we have actually enlisted uh, some of the publications and also share the various uh, reports that we have, okay, uh, from various countries. All right. So um, these are the 17 themes okay, that are being uh, mentioned, uh, uh, you know, among the participants. Eh? Uh, these are the factors that you consider. Uh, we, we don't actually call them factors, but we just ask them a question. Okay, where, where, do, you, where do you publish your research? Okay, can you please, uh, you know, rank them? Okay, just indicate whether it is very important or not, right? To what extent are they important? So the 17 themes emerge from this qualitative uh, interview, all right? And, and you see, eh? Uh, uh, the participants, 177 uh, from eight countries, uh, basically about 20 to 24 participants okay, from each country. All right. 
uh, the highest that is ranked is index in was and or scopus. Okay. So this is the most important factor, actually, or conditions that early career researchers thought of why they uh, or where they published their research. All right, but basically, uh, when we, we when we ask them, okay, further about uh, these particular conditions, uh, uh, it is not actually by choice. It is not by choice, right? Uh, they are told to do so. Okay. Uh, it is highly ranked here, index in was or scopus, because all 20 participants from Malaysia indicated that uh, this is very important, and some from China and also Poland and, and Russia. All right. But researchers from, uh, from Europe, yeah, uh, uh, like uh, France and also Spain, uh, UK and USA, uh, they did not mention this at all. All right. Because it is very, uh, uh, because publishing in high impact factor journals is a, is a second nature. Uh, uh, and relevant to the field is a second nature for for authors uh, for researchers from these countries. But researchers from Malaysia, okay, they say that okay, I'm uh, I will I will I will definitely publish in index uh, was index or Scopus index journals, okay, because they are told to do so. All right, and in the end, uh, when we will further talk about why uh, indexation uh, in was or Scopus matters, because they feel that. Uh, you know, uh, journals uh, in these particular databases are, are, are of quality. Okay, so we can easily see that uh, indexation status actually is a proxy for reliability among among uh, among researchers. Okay, all right. Uh, I will not go through all the uh, seven, uh, all the other sixteen, uh, sixteen factors. Okay, you can see that. Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Perhaps this also fit your criteria of of publishing of of considering where to publish. <clears throat> All right, but when we talk about okay the, the the criteria okay in publishing ethically okay you should always choose the right journal okay so this is coming from me all right and also from my experience and from my readings eh? okay you should always choose the right journals I believe okay if you talk to any uh, you know uh, uh, experienced uh, researchers experienced authors they will also always say that you have to choose the right journals okay in order to publish your work right the most important thing is that okay you must understand the aim and the scope of the journal the type of articles that the journal choose or to publish the readership of the journal is the journals relevant to your uh, area for example all right uh, and also there are areas where you need to further uh, go to uh, for a particular journal uh, to discover whether the journal has a journal matrix, okay, guide for authors, uh, whether you, uh, you, uh, you know, okay, the editor, uh, not really know, but you are familiar with the editor and the editorial board members, the work, their work, yeah? not, not them, but their work, all right, you are familiar with their works. And also the very important point is that, okay, the journal must be peer reviewed because that is the gold standard Okay, in the scientific, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, publishing world. Okay, so you have to choose the right journal, and it is not, it is not uh, difficult. Okay, to choose the right journal, uh, because uh, you know, uh, most of you have been taught this before. Uh, uh, you know, in uh, through your training, through your research training, and also uh, through you know, um, attending uh, attending uh, courses perhaps training uh, by, by the library, uh, by IPPP, and now by ADAT. Yeah, okay, so it is not difficult. <coughs> All right, okay. So this is actually coming from, uh, coming from, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I would say, coming from your own institution. Okay, coming on from your own institution, for example, coming from UM, yeah, uh, to choose index journals. All right. Okay. Uh, I, I would like to ask you all, maybe you can just put this on chat. Uh, why do you choose index journals uh, to publish your work? Anyone can just put it on chat or you can just put up your hand and unmute. Nobody, okay. 
<laughs> right. Okay. So as I mentioned just now, okay, um, uh, indexation status is a proximity, proxy. It's a proxy uh, of re reliability. Uh, uh, okay. It, it can also be a surrogate of quality. All right. Uh, but basically, uh, when we talk about uh, index journals, yeah, uh, it is always about having a prestigious indexation status, uh, such as uh, covered by uh, the global citation databases. So at present, when we talk about global citation databases, it has always been uh, the, you know, uh, Clarivates Analytics Web of Science uh, and also Elsevier Scopus. Okay. All right. Um, well, uh, for us, it is not, um, uh, it has been mandated, okay, to publish in, uh, was or Scopus Index Journals. But you should understand okay, the reason why uh, we publish in such journals, yeah, in such journals, all right? Because these particular journals that are being, uh, you know, uh, being indexed, okay, in reputable databases, for example, uh, the Web of Science Core Collections. It all started with uh, uh, SS, uh, SCI and uh, SCI, yeah, SSCI and SCI, all right? Because this particular uh, citation index only capture the core literature of the world, okay? So we want to make sure that we are publishing in journals in, that are in the core literature of your own discipline. So that is actually the reason. It has nothing to do actually with, with, with ranking dan sebagainya. Okay, so you as a researcher, you should be able to, uh, to, 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 to understand this, okay? We, we choose to publish in index journals because these journals are easily Journals that are being indexed are easily accessible, okay? All right, journals that uh, are indexed are easily accessible, okay? Uh, because these journals, they are available in various online databases, right, that the library uh, uh, subscribe, okay? Which means that if your articles are being captured in these databases, they have the high chance of being found, read, and hopefully cited. So this is actually the principle why why uh, we we uh, it is very why uh, we should consider okay publishing in journals that are indexed by major citation databases right okay so uh, uh, when we talk about indexation status it always correlate with impact factor it always correlate with uh, you know um, uh, reputation of the publisher, for example, or even the reputation of the editorial board members. Okay, and it is not that easy. Okay, for a particular journal to penetrate into, uh, you know, uh, a global citation databases. There is a thorough uh, assessment that is being done to gauge the quality and also the possible impact of that particular journal. Okay, so that is why. Uh, uh, you know, one criteria for you to identify in terms of publishing your uh, your paper or uh, your research ethically is through uh, publishing in this kind of journals, okay? Journals that are in the core literature of the world. So hopefully that these journals, okay, will be able to preserve, okay, will, uh, your, 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 the record of science and also for your institution, for the library actually to, uh, to, um, uh, to preserve the record of science, okay, the re your the publication record, right? Because uh, the publication record is out there, is being organized systematically in various online databases, okay, especially in these two databases, and being incorporated in various library databases, for example, in your own discipline. For example, in my discipline, uh, Lisa, for example, okay, uh, all right, in in uh, in in law, for example, Lexis and Lexis in engineering, for example, in uh, you know, IEEE or ACM for computer science. Okay, so that is why, right? You need to make sure that uh, you go for journals that are that have a good, that have a reputable indexation status. Okay, all right. Here we talk about authoritative indexing and abstracting agency. Yeah, authoritative. For example, uh, my site. Okay, it is considered now an author authoritative indexing and abstracting agency. So it has been recognized, okay, by University of Malaya, all right, as part of, you know, uh, you know, journals that you should be publishing in. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay, the third one is very, very important. Okay, uh, this is what I believe in, all right. As young researchers, you should 
Okay, choose the core journals in your own discipline. You build your reputation, you build your publishing uh, performance, productivity in the core journals in your own discipline first. Of course, you will have other journals that you would like to publish in because of the nature of your research being multi or interdisciplinary where you collaborate with others from other disciplines. But, okay, uh, if you, you should be able okay, to publish in, in the core journals in your own discipline first because in the end, people will actually relate you or connect you to your discipline, all right? We do not want in the end, okay, you have published and people will query, okay, why are you publishing in such journals and you cannot, uh, you cannot justify, all right? Although you are, you are from a particular discipline, for example, okay, in computing, for example, or in, uh, in, um, in library information science, for example, but you are producing so much articles in education journal, for example, all right? So this is very important. You need to make sure that you publish ethically, okay? So choose journals in your own discipline, all right? Journals that you cite most to write the paper. Journals that you read. You don't submit your paper to a journal that you don't read or you won't read. Suddenly, you have not read, uh, you know, um, uh, quality and quantity, for example. You, so you publish your article in this particular journal. All right. May, maybe it is a cytometrics or a bibliometric study. Okay. But you are publish, you're not publishing in the journals that are the core literature in cytometrics or infometrics. Okay. So this is what I, I believe uh, you should be able to do. All right. You... Submit to journals that you have read, that you have perhaps reviewed, that you have published before. Okay. All right. So there are various bibliometric study that you can actually, uh, you know, uh, refer to about the journals or journals that publish a review study in your research areas. Because we can see a lot of research coming in doing SLR or, for example, bibliometric study or cytometrics assessment of a particular discipline. So make sure that this particular, you know, articles channel to the journals that are related to that discipline. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, uh, finally, all right, uh, choosing open access journals. Okay. So uh, when we talk about open access, we know that there are various uh, versions okay, or, or categories of open access journals from gold to green. All right. So the reason uh, why I'm advocating open access journals okay, is because um, uh, uh, the the uh, the research output, your, your article actually will be uh, read by all, disseminated to all, okay? Uh, the, author, the, the readers, they are free to, uh, to read your article, all right? Yeah? So your article is not being under paywall, okay? It is aligned with the concept of uh, knowledge sharing, okay? Uh, uh, openness and transparency uh, that I'm going to talk a little bit later on, all right? So basically, I, what I have here are the examples okay, of uh, open access, uh, root, yeah? gold, diamond, bronze, hybrid, OAMG, and also green. Um, it is, it is I, I would say it is very, uh, it is not common eh, for Malaysian authors eh, uh, to archive their, their articles eh? Uh, or their preprints, for example, or postprints in uh, in IR, right? Uh, because uh, very often the librarians uh, take responsibility to archive or res the research output or institutional research output in in institutional repository and green open access. Okay, but this is something that perhaps uh, you know uh, modern researchers should do. Yeah, uh, you know, share through IR through uh, through digital repository uh, and also. Um, you know, uh, um, have, have, I would say at this point, my advice is to try to support uh, journals that are owned uh, by uh, the research community. Uh, you know, uh, diamond and bronze journals, for example, right? Uh, journals that are owned by your, by your research community. Uh, and very often these journals are published under uh, universities, uh, you know, professional societies and also associations. And most of these journals, uh, nowadays, they are becoming uh, diamond and bronze. Uh, they are free to read and, and publish. Okay, all right. But of course, uh, because uh, there have been uh, support from institution, 
to uh, to bear the cost of uh, you know um, of article processing charges. Uh, uh, researchers are going for gold eh, because that is an institution support. Uh, researchers are going for gold journals, eh? uh, uh, but uh, they are very very selective in selecting the gold journals. Eh? Only the gold journals that are in uh, you know uh, uh, Q one or Q two of wars. Right, but the spirit behind uh, publishing in open access uh, journals is that uh, because uh, you know uh, it is uh, free to to read and publish, free to read and publish. Okay, in terms of free to publish here, uh, because uh, because you should understand uh, since two thousand, uh, since two thousand, the research community actually the research community in general. All right. Uh, uh, the scholarly research community, when talk about scholarly, it means that they are publishing in journals. In general, they understand the need for, um, for the author to bear for the publication costs. The need for the author to bear for the publication costs. Okay, because journal subscription nowadays, uh, starting 2000, we understand that it is becoming very, very high. Okay, uh, very pricey. And, uh, you know, authors in general, they, they feel that, uh, you know, uh, the journal, uh, the, we they, they should bear the publication costs, okay, supported by the institution. But somehow uh, we we do not expect that this is becoming very very, uh, you know, uh, problematic nowadays when uh, when commercial publishers put a very very high price in terms of uh, you know ABC. Yeah, so that's why the global community nowadays are encouraging uh, scholars to publish in their research uh, their own. Uh, journals, journals that are owned by the research community, okay, journals uh, uh, that uh, are published by uh, uh, research performing organizations, you know, uh, university press, uh, professional societies, and also associations. Okay. All right. Okay, so these are the reasons why open access is being, uh, is being very much encouraged. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Because of this, uh, you know, this, uh, this thought that why should we publish our research if our findings are not going to reach out to other researchers around the globe? So that is why, okay, uh, open access publishing is very much encouraged, okay, to further disseminate it to, uh, so that everybody uh, will get benefit from your research, your research uh, findings will be inclusive yeah, to everybody, diversified, right? But in the end, okay, when we talk about open access, uh, there have been, you know, still uh, uh, issues about or thought about open access being, uh, being not having quality or, or, or perhaps uh, being uh, predatory, okay? Uh, uh, probable, potential or possible uh, you know, predatory journals, all right? But definitely that uh, uh, you, you will be able to identify okay, whether a journal is, uh, you know, uh, predatory or not, all right? Uh, with certain guidelines, okay? Uh, it, is not, it is not difficult actually to identify. You just need to check the indexation status uh, and also be familiar, okay, with the, with the, with the way the journal, uh, you know, solicit for... Uh, 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 papers, yeah. All right. <clears throat> okay, so okay, I have listed here some characteristic of a predatory open access journals. I'm going to go through this, yeah. Uh, I believe this has been, uh, you know, uh, 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 disseminated before uh, about uh, the characteristic of predatory journals. Prof. Ng Kwan Hong, yeah, our professor emeritus, yeah, has always been talking about, you know, uh, about, uh, you know, to be very careful of predatory open access journals. Yeah? Okay, I'll just skip this. All right. Okay, so uh, when we talk about uh, uh, journals, uh, in the end, we want to make sure that the journals that we submit to uh, will, will definitely be, um, uh, you know, a platform where you will build your reputation. Okay, so you need to make sure that uh, the journal is uh, authoritative, reliable, right? So um, very often uh, we refer to a particular list, 
Okay. So what I would like uh, to um, uh, uh, encourage here is that uh, you always refer to uh, to a whitelist. Okay. Because a whitelist promotes publication quality and ethics. All right. Uh, a blacklist, for example, like a Bill's, Bill's blacklist or perhaps a Cabell blacklist, it only tells you what journals that you should avoid. Okay, it does not tell you which journals that you should publish in. Okay, so it depends on your university, what whitelist that your university is uh, promoting, for example. All right, some departments or faculties have their own whitelist, okay, uh, apart from awards or scopus uh, that is being mandated by uh, the institution. <coughs> All right, uh, the next part is how. How do you publish ethically? Okay, how do you publish ethically? I'm just sharing these two cartoons that I got from the net, all right? Okay, because these are the, some of the issues that we, we, some of the stories, okay, that we heard about, you know, people uh, not publishing ethically, in, especially in terms of, you know, uh, you know, about uh, authorship, okay, uh, a building an authorship line, uh, also perhaps during a peer review process where there is a conflict, or in in the peer review, uh, or perhaps you have a you 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 experience a fake peer review process, for example. All right. So how do you actually plan and execute to publish your precious precious research ethically? So this is the questions that I'm going to cover. All right. So basically, all right, it all started from the first day you start, you know, uh, doing your research, okay, and which part of your research that you would like or have the potential to be published, okay? So, first of all, you should be able to be very, very familiar with publication guidelines, ethical guidelines, okay, on the authorship, uh, on, uh, you know, uh, the contribution when writing, for example, and in terms of the content that you write, okay? Uh, and the second thing is that you need to make sure that, okay, the timely report reporting and publication, all right? So if let's say you have a paper, you have a paper that you shaped way back in 2015, for example, and only 2020 that you, only in 2020 that you start submitting it, all right? So you have to be very, very transparent, okay? About when you, when you collect the data, for example, yeah? We do not want this to, uh, to occur later on after the peer review and the peer reviewer will, ask about all this, okay, and to the fact that you only supply all the information uh, after the paper has been, you know, uh, paper has been uh, reviewed, for example, for second, uh, second, second uh, uh, round of peer review, for example, and then, and, 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 and in the end, after the major corrections, uh, your paper is being uh, rejected, all right? Okay, ensure accuracy, completeness, lack of bias in publications, detail out the methodology, the research design, be very, very ready with the data, with all supplementary materials, for example, because in some nowadays, uh, the, a journal a reviewers, a peer reviewers, uh, they, they do request all this, okay, from the editors, all right? So you have to make sure that all these are in place, uh, 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 you know, carefully, all right, when you plan and you execute in terms of your publishing, all right. And uh, nowadays, okay, it is quite common eh, for us before we submit, okay, we uh, sub uh, before we submit for publication, we go to the, you know, turn it in, for example, okay, just to make sure that, uh, you know, you, you, uh, uh, the, the percentage of turn it in in terms of uh, similarity is is low. For example, okay, that is, if that is the way uh, uh, you you execute it, okay, that is fine, all right. Because in the end, also uh, some journal editors uh, will always check, okay, uh, whether the research has been published or part of the research has been published before, and uh, they they all also go to you know uh, um, uh, 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 similarity, originality, uh, checking uh, tools. Okay, to to uh, to filter your, uh, to check your publication. Okay, so th this is very important. Yeah, all right. One thing is that okay, you should also be familiar with COP. Yeah, um, <clears throat> all right, with the various uh, you know uh, ethical policies and author declarations under um, committee of. Uh, uh, published publication ethics okay so uh, most journals nowadays uh, they have they have to 
uh, you know, uh, adhere to COPE uh, uh, in terms of authorship statement, conflict of interest, uh, whether the journals allow, uh, you know, uh, submission or simultaneous submissions. Some journals, they do allow this. Okay, so you have to, uh, you have to look at, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the policy of that particular journals. All right. Okay. Uh, even, even if some journals uh, uh, nowadays, they do not, uh, they do not uh, tolerate, okay, submission, uh, simultaneous submission. Okay, uh, if you do that, please declare it. Okay, if the, the paper has been presented or is going to be presented, parts of the paper in a conference, you have to declare it. Yeah, okay, all right. Um, uh, and nowadays, it is also common, okay, for authors to declare uh, their roles in the paper. Okay, even if it's not required, you might want to include that also in the cover letter, okay, to, to the journals, right, to the journal editor. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, okay. Just sharing with you. All right. Some of the uh, unethical behavior that can uh, earn rejection. Eh? And in the end, if it is a curse time and time again, and if papers are being uh, retracted, uh, a particular author might be banned. Okay. From publishing in the journal. Okay. Some uh, uh, unethical behavior. Okay, I believe you know uh, some of this, yeah? Okay, salami publishing, multiple submissions, okay? Although some of this, yeah, like, like for example, uh, salami publishing, okay? Uh, it can, uh, it has a different understanding lah, based on uh, 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 authors of different discipline, yeah? Okay, all right. <clears throat> Improper author contribution, excessive self-citation. Now, this one is also very important, okay? Uh, yeah, because we do not want a paper to be rejected just because, uh, you know, uh, you excessively uh, self-cite uh, your research group, for example. This is happening, yeah? Citation gaming, you cite a sister journal of a, a sister journal, uh, and that is, you know, that is actually, uh, uh, even when the editor, oh, sorry, not editor, I'm not sure whether editor or peer review asks you to cite a particular article, so you have to also make sure that uh, citation of that article re is really, really uh, relevant, okay, to that particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, author or resource, okay? If it is not, you need to make sure that uh, you rationalize it well, okay, in your rebuttal, uh, response, uh, rebuttal, or your, your, you know, uh, your, your response, okay, uh, to the editor later on after the paper has been reviewed. All right. Okay. Okay. So these are uh, some of the publications violations uh, that can threaten the integrity of science. Uh. Uh, these are some of the uh, violations uh, that, re uh, that can, uh, you know, um, result in a paper being retracted, a paper being withdrawn, for example. All right. So I'm just going to talk about uh, authorship dispute here, okay, because it very much relates to uh, uh, publications uh, uh, integrity. Okay. All right. So there have been many cases, okay, uh, uh, where a particular paper is being asked to be retracted because of authorship dispute, meaning that. Um, you know, uh, the retraction is actually, uh, you know, being, uh, being decided by the journal editor because of certain, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, unsatisfaction, dissatisfaction in terms of the authorship line. Okay. So that is why it is very, very important for, uh, you know, uh, authors who work in a particular research, uh, you know, whether it is based on a research group arrangement or maybe just inform, maybe, uh, because so we, we understand some papers that uh, they do not actually originate from research group, but uh, people coming together, okay, and decide what to publish. And, 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 and then, and then in the end, okay, try to build the authorship line, okay, and determining the authorship line, meaning who should be in the authorship or the, uh, of the paper is very, very important, uh, you know, a decision to be made very much earlier, okay, not after the paper has been, you know, uh, 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 written or when the paper is going to be submitted for peer review, yeah, so this is very, very important. All right. 
So when you talk about ethical authorship, eh, this is always the uh, the criteria. This is the gold standard. Eh? Okay. So in terms of uh, you know uh, practicing ethical authorship, you should never allow your name to be included as author. And we understand this. Okay. We have been educated this way. All right. By our uh, you know mentor, for example, by your previous supervisors when you did your your PhD, for example, even uh, from your, uh, you know, research, uh, 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 research director or your, uh, you know, principal uh, investigator in your research group, for example, right? Never allow your name to be included as author if you do not meet all the four criteria. So what are the four criteria? Okay, first of all, author, okay, should have substantial contribution to the work. Author should have uh, substance, substantial contribution uh, to the uh, to the to the research work okay to the not only to the paper but also to the research work uh, to the data collection analysis of the data interpretation of the findings yeah? okay so that is one all right okay author should be involved in drafting the work or revising the work yeah meaning that author should have uh, 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 sh you should make your hands dirty, lah, okay, uh, in order to come up with that work. You, you need to write, you need to write, okay, All the, although it is in the form of drafting the earlier, the earlier, uh, the very first, uh, you know, the zero draft, for example, okay, to the end of perhaps editing the work later on, the final version, for example, okay, so authors should also approve the final version, okay, before it is published, right? And finally, authors should be uh, should agree okay to be accountable uh, to all aspects of the work in order to ensure that the work is uh, related to the accuracy and integrity and this is and this is where you need to endorse okay in the in the author declaration form all right the, the last one okay but what i would like to emphasize here is that okay to be listed as an author all right, a researcher should meet the four criteria. Okay, so this is actually the gold standard. All right. <clears throat> okay. All right. Now you are in the author authorship line. You are an author of the journal. How about the order? Okay, of the authorship. Uh, this now is becoming an issue as well, especially when we are being assessed. Okay, based on our authorship line, the authorship order. Right, you get more points if you are the principal author. Definitely, you get more points. Okay, if you are the first or the principal author. Right. Okay. But however, okay, uh, the author or the list actually differs from disciplines to discipline. Yeah. Okay. So it doesn't mean that if I'm the, uh, you know, third author, or maybe I'm the last author, I did not contribute significantly. Okay. So it all depends. All right. Okay. So how do you actually position the order of authors? So this should be, um, you know, uh, discussed very much earlier, okay, in your research group, all right, yeah, especially if you have, uh, you know, uh, you know, multiple authors, more than, more than five, you know, more than ten, especially nowadays for sciences, more than ten, eh? ten is is very much, it is becoming a norm, yeah, but if you look at the, if you do a uh, you know, bibliometric analysis uh, of papers in a particular discipline, for example, you can see, uh, you know, the differences uh, between, uh, you know, among disciplines. But, but in general, an average original research papers has five authors, right? This is actually been demonstrated in data from WAS, right? Yeah. Okay. So how do you decide okay, the order of the author? First of all, you have to look at the relative contribution. Right, so the author who most, uh, you know, uh, uh, who has the most contribution, who has the most substantial contribution, should always be the, uh, the first author. The author who conceptualized and write the first draft should always becomes the first author. Okay, so it is fair enough for this. All right, that is why we put our student. Okay, when we co-author with our student. All right, from their, uh, you know, from their thesis, yeah, from their research project, for example, they should always be the first author. All right. In some fields, especially in uh, in physics, energy physics, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, involving large group projects. Okay, they apply the alphabetical list. 
right? So they have hundreds and even thousands, more than 1,000 authors. So they have an alphabetical list uh, after uh, the first author, for example, all right? Or even starting from the first author, yeah? Okay. Uh, nowadays, journals understand okay, the need for and the significance for first, for first authors and also corresponding authors, all right? So uh, some journals okay, do allow multiple first authors and also multiple corresponding authors. Yeah? Okay. All right. <clears throat> However, when, when we, uh, the, uh, for these journals, they do not put the, you know, uh, 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 even even if they have the uh, the 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 you know the list of authors eh? the 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 authors uh, in, in uh, you know in a particular journal following uh, 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 the authorship the first two authors uh, will always be the first authors but it will be indicated in the paper but when we when we look at the paper uh, the first two authors it also it is always sequenced based on alpha order lah. okay for example the first two authors is always based on uh, you know, uh, alpha order, but the first two authors are the first authors, okay, right? So we we, we can actually see uh, some journals practicing this, especially in the sciences and medicine, eh? okay? And also, a uh, multiple last authors. This practice uh, uh, arose as some journals wants to increase accountability of senior members. In many journals nowadays, especially in the sciences, I would say, okay, the last author is always one of the principal authors. The last author play a role just like, uh, you know, uh, uh, the principal author, okay, if not as the first author, all right? In fact, the last author, uh, is common for last author to become the corresponding author, yeah? Okay, and finally, a negotiated order. Negotiated order is very much practiced in social sciences, okay? Uh, uh, and it is always based on relative contribution. So this is what I experienced, okay, uh, in, my, in, my, uh, in my involvement, okay, in, in, uh, in uh, you know, collaborating with researchers from eight countries, right? So we have researchers on eight, uh, from eight countries, but then the, from the institution, 12 institutions, you see, from various, from various countries. So that is always, a, a, you know, a, a, a when, we, when we produce a paper, uh, the principal uh, author will always go for relative contribution, okay, based on the contribution, all right? And in many cases where, uh, where you feel that uh, uh, you, need, you need to be, uh, you, you need a merit from that paper, actually, you can actually nego. Okay. Uh, for example, uh, there was there was a time when uh, one of the uh, the co-author, okay, in my in the paper, uh, negotiated in terms of becoming, uh, you know, uh, the second author, for example. All right, because he or she will be given a merit, okay, in terms of research assessment, and then uh, because of that, all right, because of that, uh, uh, you know, the principal author. Uh, um, uh, what wanted her to do an extra work in terms of uh, the paper. I mean, just a simple, uh, you know, just additional work in terms of the data that that uh, she collected from the country. All right. So uh, you you can actually one thing that that I uh, that I have experienced, and this is always echo with with uh, what is in the what is in the literature is that um, you know international collaboration actually uh you uh trigger or, or not trigger but foster foster ethical uh, publishing okay you you might you you might argue with me this but you might want to look at the literature and try to get more you know write up about this right uh, why we need to have why does a part, why does international collaboration in terms of research and publishing is very very much encouraged is very much is prized, yeah, is prized, all right? Uh, because one aspect of it, because it promotes uh, ethics, uh, you know, uh, ethical uh, publishing, actually. Okay, you will learn, all right, from your peers elsewhere who have actually been practicing things uh, because these are all the, you know, the guidelines, the rules are being actually developed by, uh, by the West, okay, from our, uh, our colleagues from the West, all right? So you can actually see uh, and actually can learn from them, okay, on how uh, they practice ethic, uh, 
ethics in, in publishing. So you can actually learn from them. You need to be very, very transparent in terms of the data that you collect, in terms of your interpretation, in terms of data analysis, because there will be more eyes, okay, more eyes, all right, and more brains that actually look into your, your research, all right? So uh, you need to, to be very, you know, uh, cautious lah, with, with, with what you report, actually, when you are working together with these international uh, collaborators, yeah? Okay. Oh, I thought I sh could finish at 10.30. Okay. All right. Okay. So basically, nowadays, uh, when we talk about uh, publish, it's not just publish and perish. Yeah? Okay. It's not just about publish and perish, but you will publish or perish. Okay. Publish or perish, but you publish and perish if you break ethical rules. Okay. It's no longer publish or perish. Right, but it will be published and perish if you break ethical rules. Okay, right. Okay, so what happens if you break the ethical rules? Okay, all right. So these are the common things that will happen. Yeah, right. To the end, the extreme will be the article retraction. Okay, all right, article retraction. <clears throat> okay, you have heard of withdrawal, removal, replacement. Okay. Very often, uh, article replacement okay, will be because of uh, certain errors, scientific errors. Uh? So you need to, uh, the journal uh, editor or the journal publisher will retract the article and replace it with a corrected uh, version. And that will be in the form of errata. Right? But we do not want to the point that your article is being retracted because of certain profession, infringe, infringement of professional ethics and integrity. Okay? All right. So we talk about... Uh, if an article is being retracted, okay, maybe you have seen this. Yeah, you have seen this. All right, you can also see the record of retractions on Web of Science and Scopus, huh, for example. All right, so if a particular article is being retracted, okay, what will happen? Yeah, what will happen? What will the consequence be? All right, definitely, okay, your reputation as an author will be affected. All right, in many cases, huh, okay, where uh, you know uh, the retractions happen again and again. Huh, Okay, the corresponding author, the principal author, okay, will be banned okay, from publishing in a particular journal. Right? Not only that journal, but journal by a particular publisher, for example. Right? This is actually happening. Yeah? We, we, we know this that this is actually happening. All right? So I have listed here some consequences if the article has been retracted. Okay. What does retraction mean? Okay, meaning that the article is removed from the literature, okay? Because the article has been determined to be fraudulent, falsified, mistaken, or simply not reproducible, okay? So nowadays, we can see articles, okay, uh, published in 2002, for example, 2012, for example, all right? Just being retracted 2022, okay? Meaning that somebody has actually, all right, tried to reproduce, yeah, try replicate, okay, the 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 um uh, the experiment and found out that okay there is something, uh, you know, not right, okay, about uh, about the method, for example, yeah, about the data, for example, okay, and that leads to why the article is being retracted, right? You can actually see this. Uh, in the web of science, all right? Just look at some, just just search for, you know, um, uh, perhaps you can search for articles uh, from uh, Malaysia, for example, all right, being retracted in, uh, in 2022, 2021, 2020, for example, and see, okay? How far actually the publication of the article, all right? How far uh, the retracted paper was actually, uh, you know, becoming uh, a, re a retraction. So, a retraction indicates that the original article should not have been published, right? And its finding and conclusion should not be used as part of the grounds for future research, right? So, we can actually see some publishers are actually looking into this, you know? Yeah? All right? But it all depends, eh? because there will be a group of researchers who try to replicate the, result, replicate the experiments and found out that the article uh, you know, it's not reproducible. The, the 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 research is not reproducible, all right. And uh, well, communicate that to uh, to another group of researchers for uh, or, 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 or you know several group of researchers, 
uh, and uh, you know communicate that to the journal editor. Yeah, okay, so you can actually see this. All right. So this is very important eh, about retraction. So why, okay, uh, is retraction needed? First of all, because um, the scientific community wants to correct the literature and to ensure its integrity, okay? And uh, journal editors, uh, journal publishers have this obligation, all right? Uh, and also researchers in general, the research community have the obligation. So when a, research, a group of researchers like what I said just now, okay, try to, uh, you know, um, uh, replicate the experiment and find out that it does not work, has errors, for example. So this particular group of researchers has the obligation, okay, to correct the literature and ensure its integrity and report it and alert it to the journal editor or a group of researchers, right? So on part of the uh, publisher or the journal editors, yeah, uh, they would like to alert readers when a published study is no longer valid. Yeah, a study is no longer uh, credible. Okay, so that is why retraction happens. Okay, so we do not want this to happen, yeah, definitely, to our to our precious research, yeah, to our pre precious precious paper. <clears throat> okay, so these are the various parties that uh, that initiated initiated a retraction. Publisher, journal editors. Um, uh, there are cases where authors of the paper. Okay, uh, also retracted papers, all right, but very often authors of the paper retracted papers, retracted their own papers uh, because of certain errors, uh, scientific errors, all right, not because of a misconduct, yeah? Normally, publishers, journal editors, and also perhaps the institution, the university, okay, wanted uh, a paper to be retracted because of certain uh, misconduct, yeah? So, a retraction can be initiated by this. Yeah. But a retraction can also be initiated by other parties, such as um, not, not they, they can initiate, but in terms of just, you know, um, uh, writing a letter, for example, to the journalists, lah. other parties, for example, uh, other group of researchers, yeah? other researchers and independent party. <clears throat> All right. So this is basically uh, how a retraction is being done. Yeah. Okay, I'll skip this. Yeah. Okay, and how do we know about retraction nowadays? Okay, all right. One thing eh, that is uh, uh, that is good nowadays. Okay, uh, this is what I found out. Uh, retraction is also being incorporated in Mendeley. This is what I noticed. I'm not sure about other uh, other uh, you know uh, reference uh, management tool. Okay, but now if let's say you want to cite a paper and a paper is has been retracted, all right. So Mendeley will alert you. Yeah, okay. Uh, but in general, okay, a retraction is communicated uh, through the publisher website. So you can actually see from a, a publisher website that that is a retraction note. Okay, all right. And citation databases also, especially uh, WAS and Scopus, they do incorporate okay, if a paper is being retracted. Yeah, a retracted paper and the retraction. Uh, and then there is a retraction database, okay, that is, uh, 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 there is a retraction database developed by an independent party uh, that can actually monitor, that can inform us about uh, papers that are being retracted. So you can just search from this database and see, okay, papers that are being retracted. And also there is a social media platform that is a blog, I would say, Retraction Watch. Yeah, so retraction what is becoming famous nowadays, uh, actually to uh, to alert us okay, about uh, not only retractions but other you know unethical behavior in terms of doing research and also publishing. All right, but one thing that I notice, uh, 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 this is what I experience uh, as the editor of original. There are there are instances when a particular paper is being retracted, right? but then. Authors do not know. Authors do not know. Yeah, but authors still cite the paper. Yeah, but of course the reviewer scrutinize. The editor also check and and when the editor say that okay this paper has been retracted, so you should cite the retraction. Okay, you should cite the retraction and also the retracted paper. So there will be two more records that you should cite. You cannot cite uh, the paper. You should cite the retracted article and then the retraction. So, uh, very often the the authors will uh, will remove 
the two citations. Okay, so we can see nowadays uh, when we ask the authors uh, to uh, uh, to to be more transparent in terms of referencing, it's okay. You want to cite the, the retracted paper, it's up to you. All right, yeah, but you must you must cite the retraction and and the retracted article. You don't cite uh, the article. Okay, so Mendeley has now has this feature where and uh, where if you cite a particular article and if the article is has been retracted, it will alert you. So that would be wonderful. All right. Okay, so this is just an example, yeah? Okay, all right, retraction and retracted paper. So if an article is being retracted, so it will have two records, okay, in citation database, as a retraction, okay, and also as a retracted article. Okay, so just sharing with you, all right, the reasons for retraction of Malaysian papers. Okay, if you're interested, you might look at this paper, a very simple paper that I have authored with my two colleagues. Okay, an analysis of Malaysian retracted papers. We would like to identify whether there has been a misconduct or mistake. Okay, so based on the publications from a Web of Science and Scopus, all right, we have, uh, you know, concluded that, uh, you know, uh, the reasons for retractions of Malaysian papers are, okay, uh, 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 mostly because of a uh, misconduct, yeah, because of misconduct. Okay, although the number of papers are not that much, lah, 125 papers over how many years, but we can see actually it is because of uh, misconduct. Okay, and most of these papers are actually papers that are published in high rank in, in a Q1 and Q2 journals. Huh? Okay. Okay, so you can see actually here. Okay, for Malaysian papers that are retracted, eh? okay, all right, it is being retracted by the publisher. Okay, and only 0.8% papers eh, are being retracted by author. Okay, and this is because of uh, mistakes. Okay. All right, so if this happens, uh, even if it does not lead to retraction, all right, there will also always be expressions of concerns, okay, by, uh, by, um, by publishers, and the publishers will write to the university, you see, and then the university will have to do a domestic inquiry and call the researchers and all that. So we do not want this to happen. Eh? Okay. All right, just some more. Uh, findings okay about publication ethics and misconduct. All right, sharing this statistic of retraction for Malaysian uh, research performing uh, organizations. Okay, you can see UM there, and this is the data from Retraction Watch. Yeah. Okay, I just did a search yesterday, and I could find ten retractions in twenty twenty one in was. For Malaysia. Okay, so this is something that we would like to avoid eh? because most of the papers that are being retracted, okay, they are uh, they they have actually been incentivized, some of the papers, you know, uh, and uh, they they actually obtain APC, yeah, okay, and the record is no longer available. All right, so this is what uh uh this is what the readers and the librarian libraries okay do not want to uh, this to happen eh? because they are already being captured in various online databases and then the record is no longer available okay the 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 um the literature is no longer valid okay all right, so the last part is actually about reproducibility in research. And uh, when we talk about reproducibility in research, uh, the highest standard, this is the highest standard in publication ethics. Yeah. Um, various literature has shown that, um, you know, um, nowadays when we talk about reproducibility, uh, re uh, the, the presence of the code or the data or any supplementary materials regarding that research should accompany the publication, all right? So it is not just about detailing the methodology section. It is about detailing the methodology section, 
describing okay where you keep the data or any other or codes or software that you use for example for your research uh, and perhaps uh, 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 putting the supplementary materials or submitting the supplementary materials together with your your publication all right yeah so this is actually the highest standard in publication ethics now yeah okay so so uh i i was actually you know discussing this with some uh you know junior researchers all right uh, at the institute uh and they they, they see that they they they, they they are seeing this happening actually among among researchers among young researchers modern researchers where uh, when they uh, submit a particular paper okay for review uh, the preprint of the paper is also being deposited uh, in in uh, in preprint servers uh, and also uh, data and also supplementary materials uh, relating to the publication is also being deposited uh, in data repository uh, such as Figshare or Zenodo, yeah. Okay, so this is a very very good practice, all right. And the world is actually, uh, you know, advocating for this. So we can see actually the future of scientific publication publishing. Uh, I mean, in the next few years, I think maybe maybe five six years, depending on this where where these early career researchers are now. Okay, I believe that when these people okay have become uh, you know, universities administrators or, or uh, you know, uh, making policies in future, all right, they will definitely incorporate this as part of research assessment, which is very, very encouraging. Okay, all right. So here you can see actually yeah, the reproducibility spectrum. Yeah, so if it is only publication, it is not reproducible. Yeah, okay, right. But if Okay, the publication is being accompanied with a code, with code and data, okay, with other supplementary materials, all right, being deposited or being shared in various repositories or even submitted, okay, uh, together with the, uh, with the publication to the publishers. But actually, it is being encouraged for, for researchers, okay, to put, to deposit all the supplementary materials like your 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 survey questionnaire for example all right your protocol for example uh your your uh, your coding yeah, your codes yeah, uh, data for example in open repository data repository right so that it will be accessible uh, to many yeah uh, and also to the peer reviews yeah okay so if that uh is being done and practiced all right that will reach a full replication uh, for the study for your research and it is actually the gold standard okay and the global research community the international science council for example researchers there are very much in into this right so they would like to see the research community the researchers to normalize this practice to normalize using preprint servers data repositories to normalize reproducibility uh, of research <coughs> All right, so coming to uh, the last aspect in relation to reproducibility is about transparency and openness in publishing. So this transparency and openness in publishing is now being very much encouraged, being advocated in, and in some countries, it is now being mandated by research funders. Okay? Horizon 2020, Welcome Trust actually, they would like the researchers to practice top transparency and openness in publishing so you can actually see now okay uh, um, an independent independent body yeah? okay independent body all right that has uh, that also assess uh, journals uh, that that adhere to transparency and openness practice okay that has this top factor all right uh, uh, Umu, I do not mind if you share my slides, okay, with the participants, okay, so that they can read more and they can actually go to the various links that I shared here so that they can, you know, uh, learn more on their own, yeah? Okay, so basically, yeah, transparency and openness in publishing, uh, it is actually a framework, it's just a framework that supports the reproducibility of research through adoption of transparent research practice. 
uh, we we are saying that this is open science. This is open science. This is about uh, you know uh, you know reducing the barriers okay to the research output. So research output is not just about publication. Research output also covers uh, data codes, protocols, you know supplementary materials such as instrument that you use in your data and you your, that you use in your research. All right. So now okay, since this is being advocated very very much, especially for journals uh, that are owned by the scientific community, okay? Journal owned by, by the university, for example, all right? Uh, and this is also becoming an alternative way to assess journal's quality. So I foresee that in future, we do not know how, how many years to come, but I believe, okay, this particular practice will be incorporated in a research assessment. Yeah. We, I do not know when, okay, but definitely this will be incorporated, all right, because at the international level, it is, has been practiced actually through the DORA, through the Declaration of Research Assessment, where uh, transparency and openness uh, uh, is also considered, is also being, being uh, you know, being assessed or being evaluated as part of, uh, you know, uh, research practices, okay, because this particular practice, uh, facil uh, um, you know, uh, uh, inculcate uh, research ethics. Sorry, not research ethics, but uh, publishing ethics. Yeah. Okay. So uh, when a particular journal is actually being incorporated as a top factor, this is an improvement. Okay, to the journal, not only uh, to gauge the journal based on the traditional metrics such as impact factor or citation, but also uh, has its own, uh, you know, transparency and openness uh, factor. Okay, so you can go to this particular topfactor.org journal and you can see ju uh, the 1,000 plus journals, okay, that have been registered there, okay, and, um, uh, you know, you can see the top factor that they have, all right. So, uh, most of these journals uh, are in the area of science and technology, uh, especially medical and life, uh, medical and health sciences, life sciences, okay. So, we have yet to see many uh, you know, social science journals that actually, you know, are being, being uh, listed in, in top, yeah? All right. Okay. Uh, so in terms of um, uh, practicing uh, transparency and openness, like what I said just now, as a researcher, you should share or make open the data uh, that support your, uh, your publication, okay? Supplementary materials, for example. All right, and even if you do not have uh, the data, okay, uh, together with your publication, you should always include data avail availability statement in your paper. All right, so some journals they do, they require this, although not in the paper, but uh, when when you submit, you have to declare that in your cover letter. Yeah. Okay. All right. So if possible. Uh, because you have all the data, all the codes, okay, supplementary materials in various data repository, you should be able to cite them, okay, in your paper, all right? Either cite as reference, okay, uh, if the, the data has its own uh, uh, record of science, for example, like a DOI, yeah, like a digital object identifier, or if not, you, might, you can always put it under the footnote, okay, for, uh, under a footnote, all right, uh, on a page, yeah? Okay. So you can actually see transparency and openness in publishing practiced by these journals. You might want to go to some journals that have this uh, top, okay, as part of their author guideline, all right? So uh, try to be very, very familiar with this because you do not want in the end when you have published a paper, when you have shaped a paper and then you submit to this journal, but you do not realize that that's, this particular journal is already practicing top. Okay, so your you you will you will uh you know uh, you will waste a bit of time lah because the journal will will reject your paper first or ask you to submit you know uh, uh the data uh, deposit the data else uh, in a data repository for example. So this is what I I I I, I notice okay happening all right uh as a review of a paper when when uh nowadays a reviewer also would like to see whether the data is available or not. Okay, on, on data repository. So we, as a reviewer, we get back to the editor. We say, we tell the editor that we would like to see this because it is not mentioned in the paper. And then, uh, well, it goes back to the author. The author come back to us with another version of paper mentioning the data. So it will waste, you know, uh, I mean, one, two months gone, like just like that, 
right? So you make sure you practice this, okay? Make sure that the journal that you submit to, if they practice stop, make sure that uh, you, uh, you're you aware of this, yeah? All right? Okay. All right. So basically, uh, this is what I captured from Elsevier about... Uh, uh, about uh, you know uh, the moral compass uh, of publishing, yeah. The reason, all right. Uh, journals nowadays, yeah. Uh, journal publishers, be be them commercial publishers, uh, uh, or research community uh, publishers like University Press, for example, they are all outgoing. Uh, you know to have cope, uh, and some of them have started to have top. Okay. Uh, uh, indicated in their in their website, right? So it is all because of uh, to uh, to preserve research integrity and uh, sorry, publishing uh, ethics and integrity. Okay, and make sure that uh, the record of science is open. Uh, the record of science is being shared. Okay, and uh, it's going to be there. Okay, forever. Yeah. Okay. So uh, all right, this is basically my publishing advisor. Okay, um, my thought, okay, submit to the right journal. As it is now submit to one journal only, there have been actually uh, requests from researchers, okay, uh, during, uh, you know, editorial uh, board uh, meeting, okay, uh, for a particular publisher, for example, all right, uh, we, uh, we have requests from, uh, you know, uh, from authors, uh, from various part from from uh, you know uh, young scientists network for example all right to try to uh, 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 you know um, uh, sort of tell the ed general editors tell the publishers that you should consider la, when a particular uh, article is being submitted to a few journals yeah uh, if uh, the journal uh, if the author uh, declare that Okay, declare that in the cover letter. So if it is being done, it should not be a problem. Yeah, uh, because uh, uh, reviewing paper takes a lot of time. All right. Uh, it, 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 uh, nowadays, um, uh, because it is done uh, voluntarily, yeah, and peer reviewers, they are very, very selective in identifying uh, uh, articles that are uh, interesting to them that would like to review. Okay, so it takes a long, a longer time. Okay, for them to review. Uh, so there have been cases where uh, researchers uh, would like, okay, for for journal, uh, you know, to to accept, okay, uh, simultaneous pub publication. But if you do submit, okay, to a to two three journals at the same time, uh, you should be able to be transparent about it. But my advice is just submit to one journal, and uh, and if you feel that uh, you know um, you understand a particular journal, okay, if the journal takes a longer time than you expect to, uh, you might you might you know uh, because of the journal metrics, right? Journal metrics that is a certain dates, publication dates. Uh, in, uh, you you might want to use this particular metrics or information to your advantage. Yeah. Okay. But then again, my advice is just submit to one journal at one particular time, especially uh, when, when the journal belongs to, you know, uh, a, a discipline that is not that big. Like my discipline is not that big. Okay, sometimes uh, I do receive an article that is being submitted to the Malaysian Journal of Library Science, but this is something that I am okay, reviewing okay, for uh, a journal, for, for a paper that is submitted to Jolis. Okay, another journal, all right? Okay, so yeah, we, we have actually experienced that because for some journals eh, that the, the the editorial board and also peer reviews are small, we do communicate, okay, uh, in a group, all right, about, uh, you know, about the article. Yeah, not only uh, about a particular article that you like to select for us to review. Okay, so we, we can see the list of articles and then we choose the articles that we like to review. Okay, so it is being done in a meeting. Yeah? Okay? So that is why my advice is submit to one journal only. Okay, do not submit salami article. Pay attention to journal requirements because you do not want to save time. If let's say nowadays the journal has practice scope, uh, uh, sorry, the journal has practice stop. So you make sure that you have all the materials ready for you to deposit in the data repository. 
pay attention to structure english and all that all right we have also you know um uh, you know some uh, some reviewers are of the opinion that if the the if, the if the researcher does not take care of the structure and and take care of the the english language okay uh, meaning that the the re, the authors or right, are not actually being very cautious you know about doing their research something like to the extent okay so you need to pay attention to your structure do not do not want to be sloppy in terms of presenting okay your 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 paper all right to to uh, to the to your reviewers ethical standards especially uh, in terms of uh, research ethics okay and also uh, publishing ethics uh, and yes i would like to advocate uh, r3 all right uh, r3 sorry r3 uh, responsible reproducible research uh, practice this all right um, disseminate your publication well uh, try to normalize preprint okay try to share more okay apart from just you know submit your publication to a journal uh, uh, to a journal to a publisher yeah to a journal right uh, when we talk about normalized preprints uh, now it can be in a form of submitting it to um, a preprint server uh, that might be long okay to uh, the publisher Okay, or perhaps to a preprint uh, repository that is general enough uh, for you uh, that uh, uh, to that for you to share uh, your preprint, uh, the version that has not been uh, peer reviewed, yeah, and also your supplementary materials and data, yeah. Okay. All right. So finally, a uh, normalized top. Yeah. If not normalized, try to be more aware of it yeah try to be more aware of it yeah because like what i said um i, I do believe in future we do not know how many years to come yeah but i remember in 2000 in 2003 okay in 2003 uh uh when when this uh, uh 2007 uh, all this repository is coming uh, but in 2003 uh we we have got these signals that um, the research assessment uh, will be done based on uh, the indexation status of journals and also the citations that you get. That was in 2003. We, we, we got that signal, you know, uh, and it was actually practiced in 2007. Okay, 2007 when uh, UM endorsed uh, Scopus-based journals and later on, a few years later, uh, in Scopus, uh, sorry, in WAS, all right, and started to use, you know, all this uh, H index and citations as part of research assessment. Right. So now uh, the international uh, scientific community has gone all out, okay, to actually try to convince, okay, uh, various policies makers, in fact, governments, and it has also been debated in the parliament in the UK, okay, Westminster, all right, that uh, uh, transparency and openness is becoming a key, okay, in, in uh, assess uh, research output. Okay. So how is going to be cascaded to uh, to uh, to to universities or perhaps to uh, you know to to faculties departments and researchers? We do not know. Yeah, but uh, this might be one indicator, as has been stressed in uh, San Francisco Dora Declaration of Research Assessment. Okay, so with that, all right, for early career researchers, remember if you are in a university environment, research uh, intensive university. Uh, not publishing is not normal. Okay, publishing is an ethical, uh, you know, uh, ethical publishing. Okay, publishing is now becoming uh, an ethical practice for researchers. Okay, not publishing uh, is not normal. All right, so you have to publish ethically, or you have you will perish. Okay, uh, so uh, you have to you know uh, be more strategic in terms of publishing. Uh, you might want to start building your publishing. Uh, career and reputation, I would say, by publishing in journals that are in your discipline, choose, your, choose the right journal, okay, uh, no fast food in article publishing, all right, uh, yes, be careful of the predatory, but this is what I see, I will, I, 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 I can see this is, be, this is not becoming an issue, lah. people, uh, researchers nowadays, they are more, you know, uh, they are more informed, Okay, about, about predatory publishing, about how to detect a predatory journals, all right? Uh, and also, um, 
as an early career researchers, okay, you will have various opportunities, all right, uh, you know, to do research, okay. Uh, uh, you will establish yourself in doing your own research and also you will definitely uh, get various opportunities to do research. So this is something that you have to balance as well, yeah, okay. Not just go for research, but also try to seek for other opportunities to collaborate, okay, uh, incorporating your own expertise in the discipline, uh, in the overall discipline or the topic or the area that you are going to collaborate. Okay. All right. So uh, I also like to, uh, uh, you know, bring your attention uh, to this um, uh, to these publications by the International Science Council uh, uh, on, uh, you know, uh, the recent uh, the recent issues in scientific publishing. Uh, and I hope that um, this um, you can find the you know you can find the full text of this report. It is available on the web, okay, of ISC. Uh, you know, read this. Uh, perhaps there are areas that you might want you, that you might want to discuss further, okay, with your ketua jabatan, kapal, kekahai like this. All right, especially about uh, opening the record of science, okay, and and uh, and strengthening research in. Uh, research integrity lah, okay, uh, about the roles and responsibilities of publish. Uh, I, I, I understand that we have my librarian colleague, yeah, they are here also, I hope they can, you know, disseminate this, this uh, three, uh, three reports uh, to, uh, to faculties as well, okay, get the full text and disseminate to uh, the faculties. So, uh, the, the, uh, the International uh, Science Council and also UNESCO eh, is very much into, um, you know, uh, uh, lobbying and uh, lobbying eh, uh, for, uh, for the research community to be more transparent eh, uh, and open in terms of uh, publishing. All right. Uh, uh, okay. So these are all being, being reported uh, and being discussed. Okay. In this, in this uh, reports. Okay. Um, all right, uh, this is what I would like to, uh, uh, you know, highlight, okay, in terms of uh, the future of uh, scientific publishing, uh, that um, uh, the scientific community uh, worldwide uh, is now making a big move, okay, for uh, research performing organizations, uh, for countries, okay, to open their record of science, yeah. Uh, when when we talk about the the record of science, it need not be the full, you know, a full, uh, uh, full report, for example, a full record. It's just a record. For example, if you have a uh, publish, okay, uh, the record needs to be made open. All right. Uh, it should not be uh, incorporated only under uh, subscription databases. For example, now the, our record of science is being incorporated in what? In various online databases, right? Okay, citation databases, for example, okay? So uh, the same record we do not have, yeah? So if we want to, if we want to um, uh, find our record of science, we still have to go to uh, various databases to get it, okay? Right, and some of these, these databases are under subscription. Okay, so there need to be, um, uh, you know, a more strategic way of how uh, you as a researcher uh, open up your record of science. Uh, uh, and uh, the, the university, for example, open up the record of science of, of individual researchers. So now, now we have it. In the form of what we have the UM expert, we have our own IR, for example. But is our record of science there? Okay, all right. So in order for uh, for you as a researcher now to open up your record of science, okay, uh, as a researcher now, you 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 can you can practice this by publishing in affordable universal open access. Yeah, affordable universal open access journals. We are calling for researchers, uh, you know, to uh, to consider. Uh, publishing in uh, journals that are owned by uh, the scientific community, lah, affordable universal open access journals like the Diamond, the Diamond Open Access, or, or the Bronze Open Access, something like that. Okay, 
open licensing of the record of science, uh, journals published in journals that, that practice rigorous, efficient, timely peer review. Uh, although our own, uh, you know, uh, scientific community journals in Malaysia, for example, have not been practiced, have, have, have not been practices timely peer reviewed because of certain constraints. But this has been, you know, uh, you know, practice uh, in a form of open peer review, for example. All right. So this is where, this is where uh, uh, some modern researchers nowadays, okay, they put their article in in a preprint server. For example, get feedback. Okay, get feedback. Some might want to get feedback, and then you have you improve the journal, the article, for example, and then uh, uh, if if the article if it is incorporated in a preprint server where where uh, uh, there will be journals that can solicit your article, okay, they uh, they will go there and and they will invite you to submit uh, your article to the to the journal, okay. So this is the practice of you know also uh, submitting to preprint servers for a more, uh, you know, a rigorous uh, and timely peer review, all right? Uh, and also, um, uh, uh, to, 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 to have uh, uh, your, your data, okay, publication data and supplementary materials and evidence that support your research uh, publication uh, uh, together with, uh, with, with your article, okay? So concurrent publication of data and evidence, Right, maintaining the record of science, opening up, uh, you know, submit to journals that open up the references, yeah, uh, open up the reference section, okay, uh, of 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 the uh, of the article, all right, uh, and also respect the needs of disciplines and regions, okay, to also, um, you know, uh, um, where 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 applicable. Okay, uh, if your research is unique to a particular region, for example, all right, submit, submit uh, to journals that are within that, that you know, for example, uh, within that region or within that country, for example, all right, respecting the needs of disciplines and regions. Uh, uh, okay, in this case, in this case, okay, there are, there are, there have been initiatives for uh, for journals, uh, especially national journals that are in uh, uh, that are not in the English language, okay, uh, to to be given uh, to to be given prominence as well. Meaning that uh, encourage also. Um, uh, I, I'm I'm talking this not not to you as a researcher, but perhaps uh, uh, not to you as author, because to you as an author now you have certain, you know. Um, a way, a certain factors to consider when you want to publish, right? But as a researcher, okay, as a researcher, yeah, uh, you you know that uh, your particular paper is suitable to be published in a national journal, for example, in in a national journals, in a journals that is indexed by my site, for example. Don't 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 consider about the indexation status, but to a national journals, for example, to. Um, okay, if I talk about Science Malaysiana, Science Malaysiana is worse, but to a, to a national journal, okay? So, submit this to the national journals, okay? You have to re respect the needs of disciplines and regions. If the paper is, is, uh, if the paper is a paper that you collaborate with your colleagues from China, for example, but it is unique to the needs of the, of the disciplines and this particular people in China, for example, submit that paper to, uh, to a Chinese-based journal, for example. All right. Even so, to journals that are that are being, you know, if you collaborate with people from uh, from Latin America, for example, because uh, for for Latin America, most of the the country, uh, most of the research there, they publish in silo journals. All right. But perhaps, uh, but these silo journals they are underrepresented in wars and scopus. All right. So this is how, uh, you know, this is this is what the principle of uh, for scientific publishing will be in the future. Okay, so it is not just about publishing, uh, about publishing, but you need when you publish, you need you need to uh to know and to respect uh, the need for you to publish pertaining to various disciplines and also various regions. Yeah, so this is to just to make sure that your paper is inclusive. Yeah, uh, so not your paper is inclusive, but uh you know the uh, uh the research okay is inclusive for a particular. Uh, you know, for, for various regions and for various disciplines. Yeah. Okay. So you can actually see this uh, because nowadays when when we uh, went, 
when we as authors when we um uh, submit our papers to a particular journal it is all because of certain uh you know uh, performance factor all right so this is not going to be uh, in the future right so i'm not sure how this is going to be implemented by uh, by a particular institution in malaysia for example okay all right uh, adaptability to new opportunities um, yes new opportunities of disseminating uh, through various uh, informal channels for example all right yeah uh, some scholarly and uh, informal scholarly channels have been mushrooming for example scholarly blogs you can actually see this okay how scholarly blogs and when they are being tweeted and retweeted they are mentioned in various platforms uh, can can actually uh, give prominence to a book to a particular uh, research, all right? So, uh, 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 yes, you might want to consider two new opportunities of disseminating uh, your research, okay? And also accountability to the scientific community. That's what, uh, uh, you know, I have actually communicated this last, uh, just now uh, uh, based, uh, 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 based on uh, transparency uh, and openness in, in publishing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, exercise or normalize uh, practice stops. All right. So be accountable to the scientific community that you serve uh, through ethical publishing because we do not want. Uh, we we would like okay your research your precious precious research uh, to be uh, to be read to be useful to be a permanent permanent record of science. Okay, for your own research community. All right. So basically, these are the principles for scientific publishing that is being highlighted in one of the reports uh, by ISC, opening the record of science. Okay, with that, thank you very much uh, to all viewers. Okay, I can see that, uh, yeah, okay. Yes, you can get the slides, huh? All right, let me see if there are any questions. Yes, UM asked us to publish WAS or Scopus. Yes, it is being mandated, uh, Dr. No, yeah? Dr. No? Uh, it is being mandated by the university. In fact, by the, it is a ministerial decision, I would say. It's a mandate. But you have to understand the reason. Yeah? From my perspective, as a library and information science uh, researcher, okay, uh, the reason is actually uh, for your research to be disseminated well, Okay, to uh, the prominent research researchers in your own discipline. All right, because all these uh, research uh, publications that are being indexed in WAS and Scopus journals, they are being captured in uh, various library databases. Okay, and uh, they, they are being disseminated well okay, to other researchers who have access to these databases. However, okay, to make sure that your publications in WAS or Scopus Index journals that are being captured under paywall are being disseminated to others, you need to practice, uh, you know, sharing, okay, your research, uh, uh, you know, perhaps in the form of preprint or postprint uh, through uh, authoritative IR, for example, through your uh, through your university repository. So the librarians will be able to help you with that, okay, whether uh, you have addressed the copyright uh, of the particular, you know, article or not. Okay, so first author, corresponding author. Okay, this is from uh, Madam Ko Ai Peng. First author need not be the corresponding author. First author is always the author listed first in the paper, okay? Corresponding author is the person, corresponding author, is the author who uh, will be held responsible for the overall uh, publication of the paper. So the corresponding author will take charge of corresponding, okay, with the editor, uh, uh, with editor, with the journal, and perhaps in future, corresponding with the public, okay, in terms where the public or other researchers would like to know more about the paper. Okay. All right. Can we get the slides? Yes. Okay. So any other questions? <laughs> 